So Rick Barrett has explored body, mind, spirit integration for over 50 years. Um, he teaches Chinese internal martial arts and is a registered polarity practitioner. I'm very curious as to what that is, but maybe you'll, you can, maybe that'll be one of my, yeah, that'll be one of my Q&A uh, uh, questions for you, unless I have another one. Rick was inducted into the International Chinese, I want to like slow down on that. Rick was inducted into the International Chinese Martial Arts Hall of Fame as a senior master. Um, he's the author of two books, Finding You in a World of It and Tai Chi Chuan, Through the Western Gate. And I know um, he also teaches Tai Chi classes at Snug Harbor. I was at one once, and it was an awesome experience. Years ago, I, the venue changed, but there's a Cool. So if you're interested, see, see Rick for that. I know Jonathan Bricklin is a regular student of yours still, right? Um, so yeah, and uh, without further ado, I, let's welcome Rick Barrett. Thank you, Dave, for inviting me, and thank you all for taking me into your home. And uh, shout out to Jonathan Bricklin, if you're tuning in from Greece. Uh, I appreciate the, the rec to, uh, to come here and talk to you. Uh, it's a subject that is very, uh, it's, it's the, the guiding theme of, of my life, I guess. And, and so it's something that, uh, I'm delighted to be able to speak to you about the uh, uh, here's a, a book I wrote called finding you in a world of it and that of course is the topic of what I'm talking about today. And um, the uh, let me just read just a, a, one short bit from from that that uh, I think kind of sets the, the the stage there It says come with me on an on an adventure to find you in a world of it. The view from there is quite spectacular. The you that we will encounter is not just another person that we happen to be speaking to. It is the eternal you that is beyond all form and limit. The you that awakens us to a world that is alive and responsive. Finding you inspires and empowers us to live and love and do things beyond our own self-imposed limits. Okay. I can speak louder, right? Yeah. Okay. Hello. All right. Sorry. Hopefully that one hasn't had much feedback. Ah, that was the problem. Okay. So we humans, we like to think a lot. And we also like to share our thoughts with other people. And that's been going on. That's probably the, a, the, the defining quality that separates us from all the other critters that are inhabiting this planet is this capacity to share information. And it's something that um, pervades our whole lives. Now, probably more than ever, since we are awash in communication, we are awash in information. And anytime you are thinking, be it watching TV or playing a video game or reading a book, checking your email, you are out of present time. It takes a half a second or more to run a thought through your nervous system and be able to come out the other side as something that is coherent, that is something that, that understandable. We're taking this myriad of sense information and trying to compose some sort of thought out of that. And that takes a little time. So 
anytime we're thinking, we are in the past. We are out of phase with what is, out of phase with now. And that's okay. Not only that, not only is it okay, but it's what we do. It's what, what we makes us human. We like to tell stories. We like to, you know, the stories can be works of fiction or poetry. They can be scientific formulas. They can be cartoons. They can be whatever. We, we like to create these things, we like to share. We can, it can be gossip. It can be lies. These are all these creations that we, we throw together. And that's, it's terrific. It's what, you know, keeps, keeps things going. When we get lost in our thoughts, then we enter into what I call the trance of objectification. And to explain that, it's like any time we think about something, like I speak, oh, here's this microphone here. I have to convert this experience, this event, into words, into some way of representing this and say, oh, that, what does that do? It enables me to organize this information. I know this microphone, if it's like other microphones, it, uh, it does certain things. It amplifies my voice. It's different than this other microphone that I just had here because this one's not feeding back on me right now, which is kind of cool. And so I'm able to organize this information and that's, that's great. When I get caught up in that, which is a prevailing thing, then I'm spending most of my time in the past. Most of the time, most of my time out of phase with what is. Now, this is something that we humans have developed through evolution to include as part of the hardwiring of our, ner of our nervous system, of our brains. There's something called the default mode network in the brain that churns out thoughts. It upgrade, updates our narrative moment by moment by moment. It tells us, oh, Rick is doing this now. Rick is giving a talk now. Rick is talking in front of a microphone, blah, 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 blah. It's even the stuff that I don't articulate to myself is going into this and it's being, it's being registered as sort of a way of updating this Rick to let him know this is what you're doing right now, buddy, and pay attention, you know, and, and it's something that kept us, you know, alive through all those millennia, kept us safe from saber-toothed tigers and uh, marauding bands of Visigoths and, and whatnot, because if we're constantly on this alert, then we're able to anticipate danger. But now we're so awash in this information that danger is everywhere. The whole world is filled with danger. We can, we can find something bad any moment of our lives. And we can, and our nervous systems don't differentiate between the saber-toothed tiger that wants to eat me and an event that's happening 25,000 or 10,000 miles away because it, it responds. It responds with emotion, responds with this, you know, hormones reacting, things like that. So there is this constant stimulation. And when I'm in the trance of objectification, that is, I'm making mind objects out of these events, then that is my world. I am in my thoughts. I am stuck in my head. There's another setting though. This is something that I got, I was inspired by Martin Buber. You've read, heard a couple of quotes from, from the guy and uh, his book, I and Thou, I consider to be the most important book of the 20th century. If you haven't read it, uh, read it, be prepared to, as I've had more than one person say that they've thrown it against a wall. It was so vexing and, and, and the, uh, and, and, the his language but if you can manage to struggle through it it is a transformative event he introduces the idea that there are two basic ways of, of approaching this and and it's something that I've, I've taken and modified for my own 
way of, 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 of approaching this, and that is that we can look at things as its, I it, and that is whenever I consider something as an object, then nothing exists but objects, including me. That's what we call an ego. That is the self as an object. So whenever I think of anything, if I think, oh, this microphone again, then there's a Rick here talking to the microphone or through the microphone. And so there are objects and everything is objects amongst objects amongst objects. That comes from the naming. That is whenever we create that story, when we, we name something, we identify it as, oh, that, that is not like that, but it's kind of like this other thing over here. And so we get to, we name. When we name, we create things. In the Tao Te Ching, in the first chapter of the Tao Te Ching, you say the nameless, the mother of heaven and earth, named the mother of 10,000 things. And 2,500 years ago, they were talking about that same idea there. Whenever you start to tell the story, you are creating objects. And that's what we do. That's great that we can share information that way. But we also, we slip outside of that other possibility. That is where we get to confront, we get to embody, we get to meet that which is eternal. So whenever I say you, and this goes back to Buber again, it's like when you say I, you, the you that you meet is not an object amongst other objects. That you is unique. And whenever I meet you, I'm not an object either. There is just now. There is just the eternal now. And this is where we get an opportunity to plug into something much bigger. This is where we get to open up our awareness that extends well beyond the cognitive, rational, aspect of our minds, which is we love, and be able to get beyond just the five senses and attune to something which is much, much bigger. And we are able to access energy and information that extends well beyond our limited capacity to think to be able to encapsulate it into these tiny little bubbles, these little thought bubbles that say, oh, that's that thing over there. And something infinite then becomes just, just another thing, just another idea. And we can plug that and we can rearrange it and we can organize it with these systems of thought and then systems of systems of thought. And we get to get really get very meta about it all. But whenever we meet I to you, authentically and humanly, we, all that melts away, and it's just the eternal now. And that is where we meet the eternal you. Because another thing Buber said is that these lines of, of uh, I to you, they, they are parallel, but they meet at infinity. That is, you, we meet at this say God, at that point, whenever we extend that. And this, this you that we meet is not just another object. It is you have this opportunity to encounter something vibrant. And it's not just humans. It's anything. Anytime you address something in this way, you enter into a relational condition with this, this you. So let, I mean, most of us have had a, had a dog or a cat that you look in their eyes and like, it's like, there's, it's beyond anything. You, you, you know, it's, there's, there's something happens there. Something magical happens there when you do that. When you look at a newborn, 
you're a newborn child and you're, you're, you're like, oh, oh, there is a being here that wasn't here yesterday. There is, there's like this miracle happens because you are engaging with your whole being. It's not, oh, it's not just one of those things that there's none of those humans that came along. This is, now this is a real person and there, there's, there's something, there is a promise there. There is a, uh, an opportunity there for infinite potentiality in each of those moments. And that is where we get a chance to, to do that. It's, we're no longer a, 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 a bundle of qualities. They can't be numbered, they're just now. And it's, it's an opportunity to transcend. So um, with your permission, I would like to ask you to participate in just a, a very short exercise to just kind of bring this, bring this home, take it out of the theoretical and bring it into something that's actual. So in order to get into the present moment, through my Tai Chi Tran, um, 40 years plus of doing that, I've developed techniques to be able to get through the, all the thinking and into now very quickly. And the simplest way of doing this uh, sets the stage for the next stage, which is the IU part. So the first part is, if you would, I would just like you to just wiggle your index finger just and feel that finger. And now point with the index finger and just feel that. And notice that when you do that, something shifts. There's just now. You move to the gap between thoughts. Very, may, may not last more than a second, but it's there. And then you say, oh, okay. And then whenever the thoughts come back, you do it again. You point, you reach. Feel the finger, and it's like, oh, you can train your mind to be able to go into the present moment anytime you want. I say do it a hundred times a day, and that you know, start there. But it's what well, say. <laughs> but it's it's something that you you do. You you you're retraining your nervous system to be able to shift out of thinky thinky mode and into now, and to be able to go there instantly is a gift, but we're not gonna, but wait, there's more. Uh, we're going to now, if you will, grab a partner. If you don't have a partner, particularly those people who are um, uh, following along at home, you can do it with any, any object. And that is you point your finger and grab a partner and, and look them in the eyes just take, do that. Just look your partner in the eyes. If you don't have a partner, you can look at your finger. You can look at your hand. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to think, okay, I want you to say to yourself, here you are. And you're as if you are discovering someone, as if you're playing peekaboo with a child. Here you are. And just notice what happens when you do that, right? You're meeting with your whole being. You're, you've momentarily unplugged your thinker bone and you are allowing yourself to engage I to you. And that's, and you can do that with anything and everything. A dog, a cat, a tree, a, a mountain. You can do it with those things which have no form. You can do it, I do it with my, uh, my dearly departed mother. I speak to her, I to you. When you address that which is infinite and beyond all comprehension, that is prayer. I to you with God. And when you do that, we have infinite potentiality. 
There, is, there are no limits because there is nothing there to be limited. There is just now. And each time we do that, we are plunged immediately into this entirely unique moment that exists only in and of itself, not to be compared with anything else just now. So if anyone has a, a question, uh, I would be happy to, to answer at this time. Wait, wait for the mic so the people online can hear your question too. Hi, my name is Viv. I liked what you said about turn off the thinky thinky and be in the moment. And you made a little joke about do that 100 times a day. Uh, but truly, how often could you do this? I mean, it sounds like a great idea. Maybe do you recommend doing it when you're under stress or you feel like your mind's spinning? I mean, realistically, how could you work this into your life? That's a great question. Because when you are inside, when you're inside the room, the room, the, the thought room, there, what else exists outside of this room? I'm here to report that you can do it all day, every day. That anytime you want, that you are capable, you have this capacity and what to, to shift beyond the limitations of that particular process. What happens is you move into a state, which I call super consciousness, and that is where you're able to know without thinking that all the wheels grinding that we associate with thought goes, and there's just thoughts arise. They just, they just seem to happen. It's not like they're coming from somewhere else. They're coming from you, but they're still, they're just, you don't have to construct them like, like putting Legos together. They, they, they just, you know, you know without thinking. So it's, as you practice this, it gets easier and easier to shift into that state and at first, it's like it's, there's an uncertainty because the thing you've depended on your whole life is suddenly, you know, it's not there. And it's like, will I ever think again? <laughs> and, and, but as you get comfortable with it, it becomes effortless. I'm wondering if you could speak about like daydreaming and the creative process, and is that a thinky, thinky state? How does that relate to being in the now as you're speaking of it? Great question, great question. So, um, whenever we're daydreaming, I think that the, the two are, are, are different in my mind, but sometimes we get our, some inspiration from daydreaming. Basically, what we're doing with daydreaming is we're kind of, we're allowing that, that default mode network to churn up thoughts, and we're just kind of following along, only this time, instead of it being a pre-conscious process, we have made it conscious. We are following along with these thoughts and saying, okay, thoughts, where are you, where are you leading me now? When we're talking about the creative process, we get these inspirations from wherever, but then we have to choose. Out of the infinite number of thoughts that could possibly happen, we have to choose one and say, you, come out and take a bow. You know, we are, we're going to go with you. And then you take all that energy that went into dispersing your thoughts everywhere and oof, you're directing it, you're channeling it into that, that one thing, and that gives it the juice to take form. Because then, then you are able to, to embody all this meeting into this form. And so the form then becomes an it, right? To say it's a painting. You, you, you throw your soul into this painting, it becomes an it. But 
someone comes along later and they see that and say, oh, I get you. And then it becomes a, an IU again. That form recreates that IU that you put into it. Hi, Rick, and thank you very much. Um, your words are bringing up in me uh, Michael Singer and the untethered soul that I've been following and reading and his podcast. He speaks about most of which you you are speaking of and then invites us, and if people want to do this, just to stop. A and, and the key is, is to identify when all that gibberish is happening, that I think is one of the first steps to say, oh yeah, a lot of stuff is going on. And uh, he, t he teaches to stop and just stop yourself and say, back there, hello, 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 <laughs> that's you. That's what he identifies as you. And if you can stop for a minute and say, hello, 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 that's your consciousness, and everything else is not. So your words are bringing that up, and I thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah, whenever we say hello, we're addressing I to you. You know, and I like to say, here you are. Because <laughs> there's, you know, it's, it's an invitation to come play, right? It's, it's, you're inviting the world to come play with you. And it's like, instead of the world being this scary place that, that batters you around, it's like, no, no, it's an infinite playground. When you are in this IU state, there is no fear. There is no anxiousness. There's nothing to fear because there ain't nothing there. There's just you. And there are no objects in this state. So anything that you are afraid of is just added to this moment. It's like, it, it, by whenever you are in the, in, in the infinite, eternal present, there's nothing to fear, because it's just now. Yeah. Yes, sir, just from reading it, and I don't know if you mentioned it, but this fog, this busyness that you get in your brain, other authors have compared it uh, and called it monkey brain. Is that what you're referring to? That, that is another name for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a monkey mind, sure. That's, that's, that's one way of talking about it. And, uh, you know, but there's, you know, the, the, the psychologists like to call it the default mode network. And it's something that is, it's there. It's, it is operational. Anytime you're not doing something else, and if you're not doing something with your mind, if you're not consciously, intentionally doing something, it's there. And it's not a bad thing. Yeah, it, but, yeah, because a lot of times people say, oh, my monkey mind, it's as if it's my opponent. It's like, no, no, it's just doing its thing until, yeah, until you're ready to drive the car again, you know? It's, it's sometimes it's driving a bus, sometimes you're driving a bus, you know, and, and uh, you have, you, it's your, your choice. How much of your life that you want to live in the present moment? Some people are, are spending their whole lives watching the movie of their lives. They're just trying to figure out a way of telling their story. And even before... <laughs> They, there's anyone to tell it to, they're already constructing there. An event happens and they're immediately saying, how can I tell that to Joe? You know, and they're immediately going into that as, a, as, as their default setting. Uh, but if you can take a moment, take a beat and say, oh, now, before I think of any words to describe this event, I'm just going to be here, be here with the event and allow, it to, allow myself to resonate with this moment. We especially get this in music, right? If you are thinking about the music, analyzing the music, and, and trying to, uh, to anticipate it, you're missing 
the vibration that is washing over you right now. You're missing that opportunity to, to resonate with that chord, with that bass note, whatever. And think about it later. Right now, just dig it, comma, man. <laughs> Eric, anybody in the chat that has a question? Great. Thank you all so much. It's been a real thrill for me. Thank you. Appreciate it.